Hi, in this course, you'll learn how to host your Django project in the cloud for free using the Heroku platform. By the end of it, you'll have a public URL address to share with anyone to let them access and use your web application over the internet. They can be your friends, your family, or even a prospective employer who stumbled across your LinkedIn profile. Using Heroku is a fantastic way to get your portfolio project noticed and make yourself stand out from the crowd. In this course, you'll learn how to sign up for a free Heroku account, use the Heroku command line interface to create and manage your apps in the cloud, quickly bootstrap a bare-bones Django project from scratch or reuse one of your own, deploy your code to Heroku using the familiar git commands, manage configuration on Heroku, hook up your Django project to a relational database provisioned by Heroku at no charge, and make new releases and rollbacks of your project as it evolves. Because you'll be working almost exclusively in the terminal, you should already be somewhat comfortable around it. Specifically, you'll be using Bash in this course. However, if you feel lost at any point, then you can download a convenient cheat sheet of all the commands used throughout this course that you'll find in the supporting materials. Additionally, you'll need a Git client installed on your computer and know how to work with this popular version control system. If you need a quick refresher on that, then check out RealPython's introduction to Git and GitHub for Python developers. For best results, make sure that you have some Django project working locally on your computer before moving on. You can use whatever you like, including one of your hobby projects, but even the most streamlined web application will be just fine. To set up a new Django project, you can just stick around and follow this course, or jump to another tutorial for more details. You can also watch its video counterpart if that's more convenient to you. Alternatively, for something a bit more elaborate, you might watch a course about building your portfolio project. Without further ado, it's time to sign up for your Heroku account. In this short video, you'll walk through signing up for a free Heroku account. Heroku is a popular cloud platform provider which works in the platform as a service model. Unlike other major players, it lets you focus on what's most important to you, which is writing code, instead of managing the infrastructure, like installing the security updates, doing backups, rollbacks, and so on. That can dramatically reduce the time between having an idea and a working application online. On top of that, Heroku is free of charge with a limited account, no credit card required. It's quick to set up, pretty intuitive to use, and it comes with the support for Python and Django out of the box, among many other languages and frameworks, as you can see down here. That lets you take your web project online literally in minutes. So let's go ahead and sign up. Once you navigate your web browser to the Heroku homepage, click the sign up button in the top right corner over here. It will present you with a registration form to fill in your name and other details. Afterwards, you'll receive an email with a confirmation link to follow. When you later set up the password and accept the terms of service, you'll eventually land on the Heroku dashboard. You can use the dashboard to create, manage, and monitor your apps, but it's much more convenient to do so from the command line. So this is the last time you're going to see the dashboard in this course. In the next lesson, you'll install and learn how to use the Heroku CLI, which is a powerful command line interface for your Heroku account. By the end of this lesson, you'll know the basics of using the Heroku CLI, which is Heroku's command line interface. You're going to need it to continue with this course, because from now on, pretty much every lesson will rely on this tool. Don't worry if you haven't done a lot of work in the terminal before. The tool that you're about to learn will make your life a lot easier. You can follow the installation instructions that you'll find here on Heroku Dev Center, which hosts the official documentation and numerous step-by-step -step guides. Choose the installation method that's suitable for your operating system. For example, if you're on a Mac, then you can use Brew. For Windows, there's a downloadable installer. And for Ubuntu, you can install the relevant package from Snap. In case of facing any obstacles, there are always a few other installation methods available to you. However, before you do anything, make sure that you also have a Git client installed and configured. Heroku integrates with Git very tightly, which will become helpful later on. And again, the specific installation instructions and steps will differ depending on your platform. So please follow the link in this call out here for more details on that. To confirm the installation was successful, you can open your terminal now and type Heroku. 
as long as everything goes fine, it will show you the tools version and list the available commands, which are called plugins. Don't forget that there's a list of all these commands for your reference available in the course supporting materials dropdown. Most of these commands require that you're logged into Heroku, and that's understandable. While anyone can install the Heroku CLI on their computer, it will remain mostly useless until they actually identify themselves and prove that they have registered a Heroku account. Also, you might have more than just one account. Maybe you have a personal and corporate account, so you need to specify which one you'd like to use in the current terminal session. The quickest way to log in is by typing the Heroku login command. It will prompt you to open a web browser, so when you hit enter, it will open a temporary address in the Heroku domain using your default web browser, and it will try to leverage an existing session cookie to generate a new authorization token. So if you've already gone to the Heroku dashboard in this browser, then you won't have to type your password anymore. Just click the login button and return to the terminal. Otherwise, you'll be taken to the standard login page. You should see your username being revealed. As a logged in user, you can now inspect your account straight from the command line. For example, you can check your identity again by typing Heroku Who Am I? Both of these commands you've seen so far are actually aliases of other commands. The Heroku CLI has a hierarchical interface with each command typically encapsulating one or more subcommands. In this case, Who Am I is in fact an alias of a similarly named subcommand of the auth plugin. The auth plugin is also home to the login command that you used before. Remember, to display all plugins, just type Heroku or Heroku help. Some plugins have a default action associated with them. For example, typing Heroku apps will display a list of your applications. To get more information about a specific app, use the info sub command. That's pretty much all there is to the Heroku CLI. If you'd like to learn more about this tool, then head over to Heroku's organization on GitHub and find the repository named CLI. As you can tell, the Heroku CLI is written in JavaScript. It's built on top of Node.js and the OpenCLI framework, which means that you can check out the Heroku CLI source code or even contribute to it. Now that you have a Heroku account, a Git client, and you're logged in with the Heroku CLI, you're ready to create your first Heroku app that will be hosted in the cloud. In this lesson, you'll create your first Heroku app, which is an abstract container for your source code, dependencies, configuration, and metadata. By the end, you'll have a publicly available domain address to house your web project. You can start creating Heroku apps from your terminal right away. Just make sure that you're logged in with the Heroku CLI. If you're not, then check out the previous lesson. Next, type Heroku create and hit enter. After a second or two, Heroku will have created a new app and have chosen a random name for it. This ensures that your app name is globally unique across the entire Heroku platform, making it possible to use the app name as a part of your domain name. You can provide a custom app name too if you want to. In this case, unfortunately, the name portfolio project was already taken by someone else. Try another name, for example, by adding some prefix like real Python. This time you were lucky. You can create at most five distinct apps with your free Heroku account, which should be plenty in the beginning. However, if you'd like to extend that limit to 100 apps, then you'll need to verify your account by providing credit card details in your Heroku dashboard. This helps prevent abuse. Keep in mind that verifying your account doesn't automatically start charging you until you upgrade your plan or use paid add-ons. Apart from that, a verified account receives slightly more generous limits, so it might be worthwhile to consider after all. If, on the other hand, you wish to stay unverified and not disclose any of your payment details, then you can always delete one of your unused apps by typing Heroku Destroy, followed by the app name. It will prompt you to retype the name of the app, since making a mistake at this point would be irreversible. 
Note that create and destroy are aliases to the relevant subcommands of the app's plugin. There are a bunch of more app-related commands that you might find useful. For example, the open command will navigate your default web browser to the domain address of a given app. Let's list your apps first and open one by specifying its name. Great! Congratulations! Your Heroku app is already live and responding to HTTP requests. What you see is a generic placeholder view provided by Heroku to let you know that your app is currently empty. In the next few lessons, you'll learn how to deploy your Django project to a newly created app. Before you go, however, you must know that Heroku puts your apps into sleep mode after 30 minutes of inactivity, so if your app doesn't receive any network traffic within half an hour, then it might take a few extra seconds to wake up again the next time someone visits your app. That is the free account's constraint regardless of whether you verify yourself or not. Alright, at this point you got your feet wet with the Heroku platform and now it's time to dive deeper. In this short lesson, you'll bootstrap an empty Django project that you're going to host on Heroku. For a more in-depth explanation of the individual steps involved, check out RealPython's course on setting up a Django project from scratch. If you're already familiar with Django and would like to use one of your own projects, then feel free to skip this lesson altogether. You can also download a sample project from other Django tutorials that are linked in the description below. For example, there's one about building a personal diary in Django, which is still relatively straightforward, but more interesting than a barebones Django project. To begin, go to your terminal and make a new directory for your Django project. You can call it Portfolio Project. Then, change your working directory to it, and use Python's built-in VNV module to create an isolated virtual environment for your project dependencies. It's customary to place this virtual environment in your project's root folder and call it VNV. You may optionally define a descriptive name for your virtual environment to remind you which project it belongs to. This will create a lightweight copy of your Python interpreter in the designated directory. To make this virtual environment active, however, you need to source a suitable shell script from the bin subdirectory. If you're using bash, then source the first one by typing source vnv slash bin slash activate. Your prompt should change by indicating the name of an active virtual environment. Now, when you try typing python or pip, they will point to the corresponding commands in your virtual environment. Always make sure that you have activated the correct virtual environment before installing Django or any other dependencies. If you don't provide a specific dependency version, then pip will install the most recent one. At the time of recording this lesson, the latest stable version of Django was 3.2.7. So you might want to explicitly request that version to avoid potential compatibility problems. When the installation completes, you may see a warning about a newer version of pip available. It's usually a good practice to keep your tools up to date for security reasons. So if that happens, then just copy and paste the suggested command to bring pip to the newest version. Even though you've only installed Django, the web framework came with its own set of dependencies, such as a WSGI server, a time zone management tool, or a SQL parsing library. To ensure reproducible builds of your project, you should always freeze your dependencies and save them in a requirements file. Without it, Heroku won't be able to build and run your project. Now it's time to use the admin tool to scaffold the default directory structure, configuration files, and the management app for your Django project. You need to name your project using a valid Python module name because it has to be importable. This means no hyphens, no white space, nor special characters. Other than that, watch out for choosing names that would conflict with Python keywords, built-ins, or any library names like Django. Let's stick with Portfolio and create the project in the current working directory. That will create the management app along with the management script that you can use to apply pending migrations against your database. By default, every new Django project is hooked up to a local file-based SQLite database named DB. You can inspect its content using a command line tool like SQLite3 
and show the tables that Django has just created. One of those tables is meant to store Django users and their credentials that you can log in with to the built-in Django admin interface. So if you intend to use the admin, then create a super user, provide its name, the email address, and password. Finally, you can run a local development server that ships with Django and test your web application in the browser. Hooray! It's alive and working! The next step is to initialize a Git repository for your project, since you will need that to push the code to Heroku and trigger the build. In this lesson, you'll create a local Git repository for your project, which will become essential in the next steps. If you're already comfortable using Git, then jump ahead to the next lesson now. Either way, you should already have installed a command line Git client. If you've missed that part, then you'll find links to Git installation instructions in the description below. Stop your Django development server now if it's still running, or open another terminal window and make sure that you're in the project root folder. You should see the manage.py script among a few other files and folders. Don't worry about activating your virtual environment just yet unless you intend to install another third-party module or start a local development server again. Now type git init to initialize a new local git repository. This will create a subfolder named .git with the entire history of changes tracked by git. However, you won't see that folder right away if you're on macOS or Linux because names starting with a dot are hidden on those operating systems. If that's the case, then you must append the A flag to the ls command to list all directory entries. At this point, you can make your first snapshot of the project and save it in Git. Type git status to reveal the files that Git would like to save for you. As you can see, there are currently some files and folders that Git shouldn't track. For example, both the SQLite database and the virtual environment contain binary data that's specific to your computer, so it won't make sense on someone else's machine. Apart from that, this data might contain sensitive information like personally identifiable information, passwords, or API secret keys. Fortunately, Git lets you ignore certain file patterns and exclude them from tracking. You can type them manually in a special file name .gitignore, which you would typically place at the root of your project. Note the leading dot in the file name, which is important. I'm using Vim here because it's one of the most popular and readily available text editors on many Linux distributions. Unfortunately, it has a bad reputation for its clunky and unique interface, so if you haven't done any editing with Vim before, then be sure to check out the command cheat sheet that I've included in the supporting materials. When editing .gitignore, just place the individual patterns on separate lines, such as SQLite 3, VNV, or PyCache. Since specifying those entries in .gitignore by hand is a mundane and repetitive task, you might as well consider using the gitignore.io website, which will automatically create those entries for you based on the convenient tags such as Python or Django. Now, when you save the file and retype the git status command, you'll only see the files that aren't ignored by git. Perfect. You want those to be tracked, so go ahead and type git add followed by a dot to indicate the current directory. This will scan the directory recursively and place all known ignored files in the so-called staging area, which you can inspect and modify at will. When you're happy about the state of your staged files, then take their snapshot by making a comment in your local git repository. Don't forget to provide a descriptive message such as initial comment for my portfolio project. Congratulations! Git has just updated your local repository with a new entry, which you'll be able to see in your git log. Next up, you're going to see how Heroku cleverly integrates with Git.